Hey, what's up, man? Ladies. <laughs> also referred to as bitches. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. What's up, man? How y'all doing? Haven't seen you for the millennium. Yo, I just here with my main Arash. Yeah, what's going on, people? Uh, shit. Kind of whack. Um, ain't got much to do, man. Just thought of making another video, really. Um, I was watching this video about the um, Persian language, basically, and just kind of an overview of the, you know, phases that the Persian went through and how is it spoken throughout the world, where, which country and stuff like that. And uh, it's funny, like, um, you know, like, number one thing I want to say is this, like, how much of Persians have influence on humanity and how little people throughout the world, they know about this, you know, speaking of victors running, you know, writing the history, you know, um, it's pretty devastating. People, not only they don't know much about the Persian, and matter of fact, I think, you know, People just thought of it as a better thing to, you know, not to, instead of just trying to wipe it off of their vocabulary, they started talking about it, but the only thing they did was just throw a lot of bullshit in there and a lot of lies and, you know, fallacies, you know, so they didn't say, they didn't say, try to remove the idea and saying, well, there's not even such a concept as Persian, no, so no, there is such a thing as Persian, but, you know, kind of, Think of it as devil, uh, evil, some variation like that. People who just did nothing but really, you know, limiting the advance of civilization. And perhaps, you know, if it, they were not allowed, uh, yeah, you know, this thing that's only 300 years old and it's called the American Empire could have been much seen around, you know. I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's really what it comes down to, man. Yeah, that's what it is. So, uh, it's pretty... Yeah, it's just... People are just fucked, man. They don't know shit. But they just got a big mouth. Anyways, um... You know what's uh, interesting is that, um... Um... You know, uh, going back to basically around um, 2,500 years ago when um, Cyrus basically, you know, puts together this um, massive empire basically by forging alliance with, you know, other major Iranian tribes, which, you know, they landed from Siberia. You know, they basically migrated downwards from, you know, frozen lands, you know, basically trying to survive, and they landed on the Iranian, Iranian plateau, basically, so, if you come forward, there are two f pieces of history that really blockades, you know, the, you know, if you will, um, the glory of the Persians, um, number one, short time period by the Greeks, basically. And for the love of God, you know, in case you wonder how actually this... Mr... I can't even say his name. Shit, bothers my soul so bad. Um, this guy who came from Greece and he managed to take over Persia and at the end of the day when he took Persia, he started yelling, screaming so loud, saying that, YES! I'm Persian now, you know, and that was his whole thing. He traveled tons of miles and, you know, kilometers, basically. He suffered massive casualties and caused a massive vacuum of power throughout the entire region and with the dream of just one thing. So once he takes over Iran and Persia, he could be call himself Persian. Yes, you know, being a Persian was a, such a nobility, and, uh, yeah, this is the image, you know, the very Greeks who portrayed Persians, 
to the Westerners are the fucking block of civilization. They would have willing to do anything it takes to be considered Persians themselves. Anyways, well, that's another story. So, it was a short time period. Now, is just almost forgot what I was trying to tell you. You know, the rumors has it, really, and that makes really sense, because um, really, otherwise, it's hard to believe how this happened. There were 1,000 Greek soldiers who were fighting for the Persians. You know, the Persian army was um, basically two separate uh, um, divisions, if you will, which kind of really... Um, I don't know about their coordination, but basically, simple said, you know, the one is the what they call the immortals, basically, which were like solid, soul, hundred percent pure blooded, pure blooded Persian soldiers, who, yeah, they're referred to as immortals, and um, you know, they would just be serving directly the king really the king of the kings and basically um, they were they were just trained well to you know be able to you know pose that you know intimate in, in, you know imp- intimidation upon the enemies basically there were there was reason to call them immortals um, but that's another thing but the rest of the Persian army was just nothing but a mix of manpower from all different nations nations of the empire. All the nations of the empire, under a contractual basis, were supposed to supply the Persian army with manpower. Now, some of the Greek cities were also part of the Persian empire, more or less, throughout the, you know, the life of the Persian Empire. Um, it's funny, I was <laughs> reading one account uh, about the way that the a Greek historian basically uh, wrote a piece of his, piece of the writing about uh, Artaxerxes and Ar- I think the third Artaxerxes and uh, it's funny, when he writes it, he says, it is the king's desire. It's funny, he doesn't mention him as the king of Persia or the king Artaxerxes the third. He doesn't say that. He would say the king, you know, just think about it. I'm just saying, you know, fuck it, I know this is, we had some glorious time. You know, for whatever the way that they managed to hold this whole glory together, that's not a story. There were a lot of politics involved into it and a lot of dirt and shit. Um, I will say this. We led the foundation for the government. Yet again, also, we were the ones who really the world need to blame for fucking going to the wrong directions. You know, to begin with, Cyrus. He had no fucking right, you know, basically, when he rose to power, really developing himself, he's a guy who is really a genius in fighting, you know, for some fucking weird reason. Now, here's the thing about it. You know, at the time, you know, the Persian, you know, land was ruled by the Assyrians. I don't know how this rule was like, but, okay, let's say given they were not very good towards the Persians, it makes sense to saying that, okay, all right, now we're rising against the tyrants, we're putting an army together, we're taking our lands back and our freedom back again, supposedly, if there's such a thing, so we kick him out, now we have a sovereign piece of land that we identify as the Iranians, basically, as the Aryans, basically, and that's what it is. Iran means the land of Aryans, and we call them Iran. After that incident, he had no right of going around trying to kill a bunch of people, just trying to add these little countries to part of his empire. 
he could send out invitations to different nations saying that, you know what, we can hold, form a union together. You know what I'm saying? And uh, freakishly, how the hell you say that, you know, we could be much stronger, you know, instead of trying to take over and then impose this whole contractual basis saying that, okay, so I will secure your borders, but in return, I want tax from you and manpower and the fact that I'll give you also democracy and I'll let you have your own kings and your own ways of doing things. But just everything, whatever you do, just don't rebel against me. So we are really at fault. So because, you know, we, the world really learned from us. This is a problem. You know, this is why you see the fucking Americans every few years getting engaged with war and the language of force and belligerence is really high in the world. Because for some sad reason, they believe in this. They believe in the intimidation. This is, this is what it is. You know, if you believe uh, in fucking this, it's disgusting. But, you know, really, I have to blame my own people for this damn thing. Because you have a power, you have a responsibility, you have a mental capacity, you have an intellectual, intellectual capacity, and you have the ability to furnish knowledge and science to the world you have to be very careful how you do this basically you're setting a foundation a laid a layout a, you know a um you know a building block basically and it's very important how you're inclining this you know what i'm getting but anyways unfortunately this happened and that was the course of the history um <clears throat> So, anyways, there were a thousand Greek soldiers who, I think, uh, they were actually mercenaries, uh, you know, who were fighting for the Persian army, and sadly enough, they actually run back to this motherfucker, and they give him the secret ways that the Persians get engaged in wars, and this guy learns from that, and he, you know, incorporates and manipulates that into the way that basically, um, he manages that. But, you know, there were all these social issues also going on, you know. Um, so that's a really important thing. You know, like I said, um, I never live in that time frame. So I'm not going to 100% accurate, you know, assurance tell you that whenever there was a Persian Empire, there was a pure democracy going on. No, there's no such a thing. But believe it or not, to what really, for the most part, mattered for the most of the world, it was democracy. Because no other people that came along, they granted such a thing to anybody. You know, for the fucking record, in case you don't know, if you look around, I grew up in Iran, and uh, it's pretty devastating. You know, Armenians always, they say this, you know, the Turks, they committed genocide against them. The Georgians committed genocide against them. But the Persians never did such a thing to any nation. They did not go for some weird reason. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me say this. There's only one exception in history that I know of. There's this um, psychotically sick thing. We have this king. is actually pretty... Um, I feel so uh, awful about this, but... His name is Mahmoud Qaznavi. He was from the um, Qaznavi uh, dynasty. This is after Islam, basically. Not that it really much makes the matter, but unfortunately, he had this desire. He, for some reason, he, I don't know, he had some serious issue with the Indians, basically. And I feel so awful about this, but 